So if we go to clubelo.com, click on UCL for the Champions League. We get the ELO rating for the teams that are playing and what the difference is, which isn't just subtract this number from that number because it uses a, a home advantage. So it adds something like 90 something to the home team. So that's all well and good. I mean, we've seen from tennis, you know, that ELO's good. Um, it basically gives us a measure of how good different teams are. So Juve are going to play Man United tomorrow. The difference is 245. So it expects a home win with a probability of 64%. Draw 23, away 13. Now we don't know how good this is. I mean, wh whether it's of any use. I mean, it's nice because intuitively it makes sense. If you look at the rating here, it's kept a running total. So every every game that Barcelona plays, I imagine just in Europe, though I'm not 100% sure, but I think so, um, I guess so, then if, you, if Barcelona keeps winning, then its rating will keep going up, up. If you play a very weak team, and win, you barely get any points. So really, to it gets harder and harder to increase your ELO rating. So there are games today and tomorrow. What do we do? I mean, this is handy because I don't really know a lot of these teams. I've heard of, I mean, I know, of course, Barcelona, Paris Saint-Germain, that's grand, Napoli, Inter, but how do I compare, which is the fun of the European competitions, how do I compare Inter with Barcelona? I haven't been following the Italian league that much, really. I know Inter are supposed to be making a challenge to Juve this year. Though, I mean, Juve are very strong, so they're most likely going to win. And that shows up in the ELO as well, as well. Because Juve have 1999. I mean, Juve are very high. Stronger than United. Stronger than City. So that kind of fits in with my gut feeling as well. But it's handy to have some scores for young boys and Schalke, Bruges. So this gives us a better than I have no idea sense of how strong the different teams are. So how would you implement this or use this? I mean, I guess I get that the higher higher ranked team, so the better team, should be the weaker team. So UA should be should be united. Man City should win. I would tend to go towards some kind of filter. So to kind of go, okay, is it that the team that is 200 better? So anything above plus 200, 
I'm going to back them. I mean, I think they're, I'm confident that Juve are going to win, that City are going to win, Bayern are going to win, Valencia are going to win. What about the rules for minus? When the away team is stronger. I imagine that the home team is more is is more likely to win but yeah i mean i don't really know so i would look at some historical matches so we can go down here and have a look at what what seemed to work in these matches So if I use plus 200 and back any team, the home team, when it's 200, it's plus 200 or higher, then I would have backed Barcelona, who won 2 0. So I'd, I would have won that. And I would have won that. Now, both of those were would, would be a very low odds. So I imagine that I would win those bets, but. I wouldn't make all that much. What about minus? There's no big minus here. So, and even here where you have minus 92, it was a draw. There's not enough data really. So what I did was went back and manually typed in all the matches in the group stages of the Champions League. Then I wanted to find a rule. What, what uh, Something like, you know, saying I will back the home team if it's plus 200. Fortunately, that's exactly the kind of thing that machine learning does. And so I just Give it to R and tell it, what is the rule that I should use? And it told me this. Now, this is only for some matches. So the more data we have, the better the model should be. But this is better than what I said. So I would imagine that if it's more than 200 say or more than 100 but R is telling me that actually the rule is if the difference is 62 or more then the home team has won 74% of the time so you, this is far more actionable than a rough guess I mean, I would, I would have the, the intuition that perhaps the interesting thing to look at is, you know, have a cutoff and say, if the home team is a certain number or higher, that tends to be a, a cleaner signal. And what R is telling me is that the cutoff is 62. So if I keep that in mind, Oh, and before I do that, I look at this part. So what if it isn't above 62? Does that mean I, I bet on the away side? Well, in this, from this data set, from the results we've had in the Champions League so far, R is telling me. So I told R what the ELO rating of the home team was, what the ELO rating of the away team was, what the difference was, and what the result was for each of the matches. And once I gave that input, it produced this. So if maybe the difference is less than 62, so I don't know immediately, oh, I'm just going to back the home team and so on. 
Next, it says, look at the ELO rating of the home team. So H for home, ELO. If that is 1705 or higher, back to the away team. Interesting, because I would have thought that if the ELO rating was 1705, that means that the home team is very good. But actually, based on the data, based on the results we've had so far this year, most of the time, it's the away team. Because maybe the home team has a high ELO rating, like 1705. But if the difference is less than 62, that means that the away side is also very good. And remember, we add something like 100 to the ELO rating of the home team. So we need the, diff we need the difference to be 95 or higher for the home team's ELO to be higher. And that says that if the home team's ELO is less than 1705, then it's 50-50. It's either a draw or an away win. So that's what we get. Now we can just take a quick peek at the matches today. In particular, Liverpool have a plus 525. So difference greater than 62, clearly, then we expect Liverpool to have, or we expect Liverpool to win 74% of the time. Again, this is giving us a, a quick overview. It, it's not differentiating between, oh, if you had a difference of greater than 500, then you do this. It would if we had more data so we've only had something like 50 games in order to be able to distinguish between oh if the home team is in order to seg be able to seg segment the data into 10 different groups or whatever and have you know actually some data to support uh The, the pattern we basically need more data and so given the amount of data that we have this was the best pattern that it could come up with so this is saying okay I expect Liverpool to win but 74% I know the betting odds are something like one point to two or so the betting odds have Liverpool to win with the probability of something like 70 or 80 80 percent which is kind of like what this says but it's not there's not incredible value what about Paris Saint-Germain Oh, sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing altogether. Next, um, this is the match that has already occurred. So I just want to go up a bit. Yeah, so we're going to have Liverpool are going to be playing and this time Liverpool are away. And the difference is minus 334. So the difference minus 334 means we look at this branch. Next, we look at the ELO rating of the home team, 1505. That's less than this. So we expect Liverpool to win with a probability of about 50%. And given the odds are about 
1.2 that's more pricing in Liverpool to win at 70-80% which means it's not a particularly attractive bet but what about Inter versus Barcelona Barcelona is so this is minus 124 so that's less than 62 so we go here what is the ELO rating of the home team Inter is 1807 that means we go to this branch and we expect actually Barcelona to win with a probability of 67%. So I'm backing Barcelona. Atletico versus Dortmund. The difference is 168. That means the difference is greater than 62. So we actually expect Atletico to win with 74% probability. I'm I'm actually not doing that. Just because Dortmund thrashed Atletico. I mean they beat them 4-0. So so I nearly favor Dortmund. I I I I I'll, I'll leave that. Porto versus is that, is that Moscow? I don't know. Uh, so Porto, that's plus 243. That means 74%. So just looking at, by just studying the ELO rating and looking for a pattern, we can get suggested bets. The next stage is to try it out. Test it. Because at the moment, I don't know. In the next while, there'll be more games, so we'll have more data, and that will allow us to make better predictions. But that's where we are at the moment. So that's that's the next stage. After having act, act, after having found the ELO ratings, which gives us a, a leg up that adds insight, that tells us more, that tell, it tells me more than I knew if I didn't have this. Next, I can study, look for patterns in that data and see, uh, does that help? So now we have our pattern. We can test it out a little to see, um, it, does it work? Now see how the games go today.